In this video, I'm going to be ranking the best and worst gaming CPUs from Intel. I will go over the most relevant CPUs in the moment, which are 12, 13 and 14 gen, and all of them are going to be brand new. So I'm not going to go over used CPUs from Intel, like the i5 10400F for example, and I'm going to be ranking them in terms of value for gaming. So if you want to do content creation and other stuff, I'll talk about that later on. The best Intel CPUs will be in the video description in case you are looking for a new CPU and I will explain which CPUs are worth the buy and which of them are not. My name is Valentino and with that being said let's start. So first we have the cheapest CPU from Intel in the i3 12100F. I do think that this one is an amazing value however as of right now it's selling at the same price as the i3 13100F. For that reason the 12100F is going into my V tier just because of the pricing it is basically the same as the 13100F and the 13100F is just slightly faster okay. The difference is not big by any means but if both are basically the same price just get the 13 gen cpu instead of the 12 gen one for that extra performance for the same price so the 13 100f is going into my a tier and it's quite good you can actually pair it with nice gpus like the rx 6700 xt or 6750 xt or rtx 4060 i wouldn't go past that i i wouldn't pair this cpu with something like a 4060 ti or rx 6800 even though you can depending on the resolution the in-game settings and the type of games that you play I do think that if you are going to have a GPU that's better than the RTX 4060 or 6700 XT or 6750 XT I should say then I do recommend you going with a faster CPU then we have the i3-14100F this one is horrible in terms of value as of right now it's going for around 120 bucks I do not recommend it I think that is the worst CPU here because it's heavily overpriced the gaming performance is just not there it's basically the same as the i3-13 and 12100F and the price is $40 more so this one is going into my D tier do not buy it if you want a CPU for gaming and you are looking for an Intel CPU. Now the i5 12400F on the other hand is going into my S tier and the reason why it's going into my S tier is because of the pricing right now. At the moment it's going for around 110 bucks which is a great price for this i5 12 gen and it is quite faster than the i3 14100F and it's cheaper. So you spend around 10 to 15 dollars less than the 14100F and you get a much faster level of performance and you can pair this CPU with higher end GPUs up to the RX 7800XT or RTX 4070 level of performance. I wouldn't go past that, but once again, if you go past that, it might be fine depending on the games, the resolution, the settings that you play. But honestly, you can pair it with great GPUs. And if you are working with a tight budget, the 12400F is highly recommended. And even if you are going to buy a 13100F, I would recommend you considering this one if you want to achieve higher frame rates, especially in high CPU demanding games like Fortnite, for example, low settings. It's only about $23 more than the i3. So in my opinion, it is worth considering. Next, we have the i5 13 400F which is slightly faster than the 12400F but the value is just not there at the moment. It's going for around 166 bucks so you are spending $50 more than the 12400F and you are not getting a lot more performance. So I don't think this one is as good for the price that you pay. For that reason it's going into my C tier. I just do not like it at this price point especially considering that the 12600KF which is the next one is faster and is slightly cheaper. And as you can see here we have the 12600KF, 13600KF and everything is KF. The reason why I put KF CPUs instead of just K, for example, i5 13600K or 12600K is because those CPUs are designed for gaming, but also for content creation because you can use Intel Quick Sync with the iGPU. So if you're a content creator, just get the K version instead of the KF because the KF means that it has no integrated graphics. And for gaming, that doesn't make any difference. And that's why they are here because this is a gaming list. The KF versions are quite cheaper than the K version and the K KF versions are always cheaper than the K version and considering that the level of performance for gaming is the same that's why I put them here. Now the 12600 KF at the moment is going for 160 bucks so slightly cheaper than the 13400 F and it is faster. That's why this one is going into my A tier one step over the 13100 F because you can pair it with higher end graphics cards. In fact you can pair this CPU up to the RX 7900 XT or RTX 4070 Ti Super level of performance so very nice GPUs out there for 1440p or 4k resolution and also you can achieve high frame rates when it comes to esports shooters like fortnite or valorant in competitive settings so great cpu in my opinion for the price now it is not as power efficient as the 13400 f for example you will need a bigger cooler but i do think that it's worth it regardless because of the performance difference then we have the 13600 kf and i do actually have the i5 13600 k in my main system remember the k version is more for content creators and i am a content creator myself that's 
why I went with this one and it's actually amazing. You can pair it with most graphics cards in the entire market up to the RX 7900 XTX or RTX 4080 Super level of performance. So great performance for the 13600KF is more expensive of course than the 12600KF. At the moment when I'm recording this video, 13600KF is going for around 230 bucks. Now the price might be different when you are watching this one. So I will leave links to my favorite CPUs in the video description and you can check the latest prices and availability if you want to buy one of these. Now when it comes to gaming performance, I would also recommend you considering AMD because at this price point you can get the Ryzen 5 7600 which is basically the same CPU as the 13600KF when it comes to gaming performance, maybe slightly slower but it is cheaper and more operable over time. So if you are willing to consider AMD, I have an entire tier list for AMD CPUs and that one will be in the top right of the screen. Now that being said, the 13600KF is powerful and since you can pair it with most GPUs in the market, it's going into my A tier as well. One below the 12600KF just because of the price is not as nice as the 12600KF and considering that AMD has the Ryzen 5 7600 going for cheaper, it is not as good in terms of price or performance compared to the 12600KF but regardless it is a nice CPU to pair with even high-end graphics cards in the market. Next we have the i5-14400F, terrible value to be honest, right now going for $200 and if you are going to spend $200 on a CPU, just go for the 13600KF, spend the extra 30 and if you do not want to spend the extra 30 just go for the 12600KF for a cheaper price or the Ryzen 5 7600. But do not buy the 14400F, it's terrible value. It is basically the same as the 13400F for about $40 more, so it is going into my D tier. Slightly better than the 14100F because the performance is much better than the 14100F, so you can pair it with more GPUs, but it is still not good value, not good in terms of price or performance, and I wouldn't recommend it in any scenario. And the same goes for the 14600KF. This one is going for $292 and the level of performance is just not there. You are spending about $60 more than the 13600KF for about the same level of gaming performance. Then we have the i7s and here we have the 13700KF and the 14700KF. The 13700KF is great. You can pair it with the fastest graphics card in the market in the RTX 4090 if you want to. So this one is going into my A tier. Let me put it right here. The reason why it's not in my S tier is just because of the price tag. Right now going for around 360 bucks. I do believe that it's going to be cheaper because we've seen the CPU go for much less, actually around 320 to 330 bucks. At that price point, it is much better when it comes to value, but also I do not put it in S tier because you can get the 7800X 3D for about the same price point. Well, as of right now, the 7800X 3D is also more expensive than before, but I do expect these CPUs to go on a discount very soon. So the 13700KF, really good in terms of performance, not as good in terms of price. And the 14700KF is basically the same as the 13700KF. There's no real gaming difference. I mean, yes, it is slightly faster. It also depends on the game, but for the most part, you are not going to be able to tell the difference between 13 and 14 gen. However, right now, the 14700KF is going for just $10 more. So I guess grab the 14700KF because it's slightly faster and the price difference is non-existent at this time. So if the price difference is non-existent, grab the 14700KF, but keep in mind that most of the time, the 14700KF is at least $30 more expensive than the 13th gen CPU. For that reason, going into my C tier, just because most of the time, the price is different. And I know that right now the price is different, but I do expect prices to go lower because of Amazon's Prime Day. So I wouldn't recommend the 14700KF unless it's going at the same price as the 13700KF. Then for the i9 processors, I do not recommend these for gaming. These are more for content creation and productivity work, 3D rendering and all of that. So when it comes to gaming, I would recommend up to i7 CPUs. If you are going to buy an i9 processor and you want it for gaming, just because you really want an i9 CPU and you are not going to go for an i7 or i5, you want the RTX 4090 and you just think that because you have an i9 it's going to be better. Well, in that case, just get the 13900KF because the 14900KF is about $70 more expensive. And once again, the level of performance difference is non-existent. So the 13900KF going into my C tier just because it's not a gaming CPU is only for content creation. And if you're a content creator, please get the K version, not the KF. Once again, I have to tell you, but these are not gaming CPUs. It's not going into my D tier because the level of performance is top tier. As you know, these are basically the fastest CPUs from Intel when it comes to gaming as well, because even though the performance difference between the i7 and the i9 is almost non-existent, well, in most games, the i9 is slightly faster. So technically they are the fastest and the 14900 
AF going into my C tier as well, one below the 13900K AF because it just doesn't make sense for you to spend $60 more for basically the same CPU when it comes to gaming. But remember, when it comes to gaming, there are better CPUs and you have to keep in mind that my recommendation for you is different depending on your graphics card, on your budget and your FPS goal. So if you want to see the best CPU and GPU combo, which I do recommend you considering this because the CPU recommendation goes alongside the GPU recommendations. So go ahead and watch my video on the best CPU and GPU combos for every budget and every resolution 1080p, 1440p and 4k. That one will help you out much more than this one because here I'm just looking at Intel CPUs and you have to look at the entire picture especially if you are open to buying from AMD. And if you found this video helpful leave a like and subscribe and if you want personal PC help in the top link in the description I will help you out one on one that way you get the perfect PC for your needs whether that's a pre-built PC, a PC build or a laptop. If you found this video helpful leave a like and subscribe it's going to help the channel grow a lot. Thank you guys for watching thank you for the support and I will see you on the next one.